now that our circuit boards have shown up from China, we got five of those babies for 26 and change a while back. We're going to put the parts on one of them. We call that stuffing the parts on. We'll put them through the holes that are already pre drilled by the Chinaman and solder them down here on the back side. You notice the front side has got the parts placement and the identification and white silk screen. And the back just uh, is where we're going to solder when we put the parts on. And we'll see how she works. These are for the two CPUs. 28 pin sockets, 14 on each side. See where the notch is there? Right to the left of that is pin number one. So the notch lines up with the notch here on our circuit board. As you can see right there. So we'll work it in those holes. It'll take a little finessing. Then we'll solder them down. We use sockets in these ICs instead of just soldering them direct. So we can take them out, switch them around if we want to. All right. We have both those little trickies soldered in place now. Those little joints are close together, but with the right tools, it makes it a little easier. There they are. So our first two parts are mounted there. A couple of sockets. Shed a little light on the subject. There we have them. And proceeding onward. Our next order of business is to mount this 14 pin IC socket right here, right here on the circuit board. That's where we're going to mount our trigger IC and then we have all of our IC sockets on board already. Well, it's kind of up for, for, for grabs from here. Which parts we install? I like to put in the lowest to the board parts first. It's easier to turn it over and solder them in without doing a lot of clamping. And we've put the sockets in already. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put in these these little crystals. I need a 16 megahertz crystal on each CPU. We got a few of those here in our parts bin. In fact, we got a lot of them. little turkeys. Four, two, six, eight. We're not short of crystals. So hang on one, we'll pull a couple of them out of there. Alright, I pulled two of them out of the parts bin here. I love crystals. The first 20 years or so of my ham career, I depended on crystals for damn near everything I did. I love them. A lot of people don't know them, that crystals can be used to generate very, very accurate frequencies, but they can. And this is exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to put these two, since we've got two CPUs, we're setting up the time base, a separate time base for both of them. And we're going to use these 16 megahertz precision crystals to do that. So now we'll, we've picked them out of the parts bin. We're going to stick them in there and solder them. There they are. 16 megahertz crystals are installed. All right, let's get after some of the resistors. Let's do, I think we need about four 10K resistors. 10,000 ohms in here. We happen to have some of those here in our parts bin. Let's pull about... Uh, four of these babies out of here and we shall employ them as they say. While we're down here at this end of the board, we just put the three resistors in, we'll put our SMA connector on the board too. <coughs> then we'll be finished with that outside of the output. Alright, our SMA output connector is installed along with the 350 ohm output resistors. There's Schmidt trigger output, so onward we go. All the resistors are in, it's time for a 4.7 millihenry choke. While we're at it, we also mounted a 7805 voltage regulator. So now we've got all the sockets, all the crystals, resistors, our output SMA connector, the voltage regulator, everything installed, so we'll move on. We have all the 
passive components mounted now. So we're going to do a voltage check, make sure we don't have any shorts on the board. We'll do this before we put the active components, the ICs, and uh, this little buzzer we'll put him in later, the one that goes right there. Here's where the master CPU goes, the slave CPUs down here. And over here we got our Schmidt trigger, I think the 74 AC14, something like that. I have to look at my look at my schematic before I pick one out of the parts drawer. Here we have a ground connection that I put in on purpose, and we're going to use that to measure our voltages. Make sure we're getting the proper voltages since our voltage regulator circuit is finished. So we'll ground our ground pin from the old meter, volt ohm meter. Run over here, and we'll take a look at. Uh, let me look around the side here so I can see it around the camera. This should be our input 9 volts right here. Now well, that's popping up as really steady air deck. Okay. Yep, we got 8.82 .8 volts there, which is about right since it came through our diode to make sure we had the proper polarity. Now the Output terminal over here should have 5 volts on it. Let's see what we got. 5.004. 5.004. Right on the button. Let's see if I can show you that voltmeter over there. Got kind of a jam set up here. I like to have everything within reach. Alright, there's the voltmeter. Let's Let's uh, pull in a little bit to get right on the reading there. So you can see it when I touch those pins again. Okay. A little easier for me to get on the board now. I can take it off that stand. All right. We got the ground probe on the ground again. And here should be our 9 volt reading. And uh, sure enough, 8.81, just about exactly what we were looking for. So we go over to over to our input, the head of the diode. We got 9.46, 9.47. So we're getting a bit of a voltage drop across that one in 4007 diode rectifier diode that we have stuck in there. We put that in there to make sure we had. Didn't try to shoot reverse polarity into our board as kind of a safety measure. So over here again we got 8.81 volts, which is plenty. That's what we want. That's going into our voltage regulator. Then coming out of the voltage regulator we got 5.003 volts. Should be 5.0 volts exactly, but there's room for a little, little teensy weensy bit of slop in there. I mean these things aren't like going up and into a space station somewhere or anything like that, these parts. I'd pay a heck of a lot more for them, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure most of these parts came from the Chinaman. Okay, we'll check pin. Pin, uh, let's see, pin 14 on our 74 AC 14, we should have 5 volts, so that feeds the power pin of that IC, yep. Right on the button, so that means we don't have any short circuits. Everything is looking good, gang. Looking good. So we can stick our ICs in there. Next test we'll do is we'll check out our CPUs by loading the Arduino Blink program down to it. That all looks good. We're almost ready to go. We'll put our put our final parts in there. Got to get our GPS mounted in that socket. 74 AC 14. Schmidt trigger and our LCD so we can read what's going on and we'll see what happens. Making progress, making progress. Well, we inserted our CPUs and apparently they're working fine. We had tech checked those out, tested them out when we first got them by loading the, the Hello Morse code program on there that I wrote some time back. 
pretty standard practice in these little Arduinos to use pin 13 to run the run an LED. You can use that LED for all sorts of things. And uh, in this case, after I checked them out, I loaded them with the flash the firmware with my Morse code program, and what it's doing is just saying hello on both of them at the same time. We block one out. You'll see it's. H E L L O Hello Da 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 Hello Okay now over here on the other one Da 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 Hello Da 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 H E L L O So everything's working fine. CPUs are going doing great, running great guns. So. I think we're that's like ninety percent of the ninety percent of the construct design construction deal, so we got her looking in pretty good shape. Now note that I don't have a battery hooked into it now. I don't need them when I've got the programming uh, UARTs plugged in. These won't stay here permanently, they're just in while we're programming the the uh, CPUs. So we don't have to take them out of the circuit and stick them in a programmer. We don't waste any circuitry on them either because we just pull them out of there when we're done and, and uh, away we go. We can program other boards with them. So, made a few mistakes on this board. We'll have to correct next time this capacitor back here if we ever order any more. A little bit too close for comfort to this where this one plugs in. Same with this capacitor. We should move those out a little bit. And uh, we'll continue on here. Looks like a pretty successful project so far. All right. So I'm always thankful to get to this point and at least know the board is working. So I didn't screw up anything there. It can get pretty expensive ordering a bunch of these prototype boards. Yes, it can even with Chinaman prices. Here's our completed prototype board. Running mighty fine. Had to make a few adjustments. We had to jump that 4.7 mil Henry choke. It has too much resistance to allow enough enough current to get through to the to our GPS module, which is mounted right here. Eventually, that'll lay flat. Does it lay flat or lie flat? I don't know. Get out my grammar book and check it. I guess. Then I guess grammar nowadays is racist anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. You can say axe all you want. We're running along, we got a 10 kilohertz signal coming out down here now that we've set up, and there you can see on our handy dandy little pocket oscilloscope, it's a nice square wave. Down here it tells us we're right on 10 kilohertz, right on the button. And our uh, peak peak voltage there is 5.2 volts, which is pretty good. That's what we want. That's uh, coming out of our Schmidt trigger. Schmidt trigger, you remember, is right down in this area. It takes the output sinusoidal kind of waveform there from the GPS. Kind of a mix between a sine wave and a square wave and cleans it up through the Schmidt trigger circuit here with a 7414 IC and uh, we got our keyboard mounted now eventually that'll probably be mounted up on a case but right now we left enough room to slide it in there these two sockets are for programming our, our CPUs this is the master CPU over here and the, the uh, slave CPU We're operating with battery voltage now. Battery's been a while, around a while, so that's doing us 7.87 uh, volts. Right now we're reading four satellites. We're locked. Over on the right hand side, you can see that. If we let's give it a 50,000 waveform here. But we'll get a asterisk. Let's center a new. Frequency will put 50, 
one, two, three hertz, fifty thousand or fifty kilohertz. There we go. Now she reads fifty kilohertz and uh, five satellites locked. Let's see, we got a little higher frequency over here now on our oscilloscope. We'll adjust it. We still got a real nice square wave there. Looking good. Looking really good. Square waves, if you didn't know it, are it's kind of and counter intuitive, but they're made up of jillions of sine waves, all of them running together. And that's what you get. If you do it just right, you get square waves. Fantastic. All right. We can just about put this one in the book, except that I, I did redo the board a little bit. Some of these spaces on there are pretty close, so I moved a few components around on it if I ever order any other ones. Spread them out a little bit. But uh, in the meantime, there they are. She's sitting there running like a trooper. It's exactly what we were designed for, exactly what we wanted, and I got us exactly what we got. You can see the number of satellites flopping around a little bit. See, we got it. There she went from five to four. If you follow this coaxial cable around here, we get over here and you'll see on our ammo can we got the active LNA low noise, low noise amplifier. It's inside this little guy. That's the part that's receiving the signals from the satellites. Got him sitting over here so he's looking right out the window here in the dungeon. You don't have a lot of exposure to the sky outside. It's just one of those things about dungeons. It's about any dungeon it's ever been, ever will be. But that lead then brings it over here, feeds it into our input port, and away we go. All right. Love it. Well done. Nice project. Yep, it was fun. I'd go up with another one here pretty quick. Huh? Could put that in a case, but I don't know whether I'll mess around with that part of it or not. There she is. Our prototype frequency standard frequency generator, square wave generator, is working pretty good. This is the prototype. We've got power supply section over here. We're feeding it with a 9 volt wall wart. I call them. Plug it into the power socket. Goes through the voltage regulator here, reduces it to 5 volts to run the rest of the board. Even though this little guy is only 3.3 .3 volts, he'll take, this is our GPS, it'll take the uh, 5 volts okay. And sounder, both of our CPUs, the readout keyboard. And our Schmidt trigger, which leads to the output down here, which is fed into the fed into our handy dandy pocket scope in China. And this is our antenna, which is mounted. As you can see right now we're getting six satellites, and it's locked now five, now four, five. It floats around a little bit there. But we're staying locked, which is nice, so we know we're GPS locked. Our frequency is right on the button of 10 kilohertz. If we want to check that out on our pocket scope, just go over here and take a quick gander at it. See there in the corner, she says, yes sir, 10 kilohertz. Running fine. It's a few more waveforms. slow down the time base there. Speed it back up. Beautiful square waves coming out of our Schmidt trigger. So I believe we have this one whipped. Pretty neat. I didn't need another frequency standard but it was a fun project. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool what white men can do regardless of what everybody the Democrat Party say it nowadays, white men included. There she is, just blazing away. All right. So there you have the building of the 
hardware. And if anybody's interested, uh, one day I might put out the uh, programs, the development of the sketches. They call them sketches on the Arduino for the two CPUs, the master and the slave. And we also got the uh, uh, documentation for the for the original design, the schematic, the PC board specifications for the Chinaman's CAD system. But uh, we'll perhaps share that a little later. I think it's some pieces, some bits and pieces in some of my other productions earlier. But anyway, here you have the final assembly and test checkout and operation of the GPS locked dual CPU frequency standard generator. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you on the next one.